Welcome back. Let's take a look at futures this morning, indicating a gain at the start of trading. Fractional moves up uh, 15 points on the Dow Industrials. The Nasdaq is up 57. Uh, market not recovering from that tumble yesterday. The Dow tumbled better than 300 points yesterday after a week of losses that the Federal Reserve signaled rates will be higher for longer. Uh, and, of course, investors are also fearing uh, partly this looming government shutdown and the uncertainty that it brings with it. Joining us right now is ER Share CEO Joel Shulman. Joel, thanks very much for being here this morning. How do you see markets today? What's most important? Well, we may get a, a, a small bounce back, but we've got to re remember that, um, that, you know, the news with the Fed earlier this week and then all the information going on, the CPI uh, picked up a little bit earlier this month. Um, this is bad for the interest rates. I mean, the long bond's been rising to 4.6. It's up about, you know, 60 or 70 bips, uh, basis points from um, its, its June position. And this is really, uh, this, this is not good for the market. So we're seeing speculative stocks down. We're seeing um, uh, long-term uh, bonds, you know, taking a hit. Uh, so the 10-year people are, investors are focusing on, on the 10-year and the 30-year uh, interest rate mortgages are rising. That's going to have uh, strong negative, a negative effect on, on, uh, on housing. Yeah, but, I mean, let's not forget there's another deadline that we're all watching as mm. well, and that's from the Detroit automakers, right, and the yeah. uh, United Auto Workers, rather. The United Auto Workers have told the car makers they've got until noon today, 12 p.m. today, to come up with a plan that includes better benefits and better pay. Joel, how closely are you watching this? Uh, do you expect this is going to also uh, add another pressure to this economy? Well, I, I actually come from Detroit. I grew up um, on, on listening to both sides, unions and management. And, and we've got decades and people who are monitoring this story have got to remember, we've got decades and decades of distrust on both sides. And the UAW, sometimes people look at it and say, how can they demand these higher wages? At the same time, we're seeing the executives of these firms ignoring, the, you know, the plight of these workers and taking higher pay, uh, pay packages. So the, the problem is there's just distrust, and it doesn't take a lot for the UAW to just say, we're going on strike. And so, um, unfortunately, they, they tend to be uh, they, they, they tend to be fairly tough on their position, and, um, and, and you know, I'm concerned that this is going to have a, a negative outcome. Yeah, I mean, you've seen this before, I guess. Mm. John, we're expecting this to also impact the price of cars, uh, keeping inflation elevated, particularly as oil prices are is around $90 a barrel. Jump in here. What's your take? Yeah, let's uh, consider that, first of all, the uh, wages and benefits received by UAW members uh, of the big three automakers are significantly above uh, what they pay workers from Tesla, what they pay workers from the Japanese-owned uh, auto factories down south elsewhere in the country. So uh, Detroit loses some in terms of competitiveness if the uh, UAW gets a lot of what they're demanding that's going to hurt the profitability and, and the ability to sell uh, cars made by the uh, big three and also not to be overlooked is how this is linked to the introduction of electric vehicles uh, the UAW is well aware that the big three automakers are going to be receiving gigantic subsidies to try to speed up the introduction of EVs. And it makes sense that the UAW wants a piece of the action. They want more of these subsidies since it's sort of like free money uh, for the big three automakers. And by the way, I think more than anything else right now, the problem facing financial markets is not. Uh, Fed policy. It's not monetary policy. Instead, it's fiscal policy looking forward. All of this worry about where do these subsidies end? Where does this increase regulation end? And so on. This could prove to lend an inflationary bias to the U.S. economy that's going to be very difficult to get rid of. Yeah, especially with oil where it is, Joel. What's your take? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, John makes a very good point here in terms of the uh, less competitive nature of Detroit, um, and, and this has been going on for many years. This has been going on for 40, 50 years. 
um, when the Japanese first entered into uh, the area and started competing on, on lower cost structure. But we've got to remember too, the robotics is the big story when it comes to bringing the cost down. And we've also got to remember that if as recently as five to 10 years ago, the automakers had 220, 230,000 employees um, working for them at, for many of the big companies. Uh, and now we're seeing uh, that drop by, by 50, 60,000. So the UAW knows that robotics is going to be, re be replacing more and more of their members. And, um, and this is gonna be a story that will continue to play out. We've gotta watch it, but again, Detroit's always had the focus on being less competitive with these UAW strikes and, and, we're, and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna see conflict. Yeah, for sure. Joel, thank you. We will see you soon. We appreciate you.